Great. Hi, everybody. So in our last session, we did um, capacitive reactants. So we reviewed that. Now we are going to get into inductive reactants. So a simple RL circuit. Okay, so RC, resistive capacitive, RL, resistive inductive. All right, so if you remember, I'm gonna switch to, um, screen here. So if you remember, we we're talking about capacitors. We were talking about, we had the capacitor, okay? It was uh, in, an, in an AC circuit. So what happened was the voltage across the capacitor was always changing, the applied voltage, right? So the capacitor was never able to settle into a steady state which in a DC circuit is at five tau. So it had, it was charging and discharging, but lagging behind the applied signal, okay? So that was, that brings about uh, a capacitive reactance, opposition to current caused by the capacitor. So, and if you remember, this is E. So if we were to complete our little circuit here, right? We have C, R, E. We have E, and this is VC. And VC lags E, okay? So we remember doing that. But this is never allowed to get to a steady state. And if you remember in a DC circuit, the capacitor would eventually charge to the applied voltage and effectively the current would stop in this circuit, okay? So we had our, Capacitive reactants, and that was calculated by one over two pi FC. All right. So now we are getting into inductive reactants. And what we are going to see is we have a resistor, our inductor. All right. And as you, if you remember from the DC uh, part of the course, An inductor in a circuit will fight a change in current. Okay, it will oppose a change in current until it hits steady state, which is at five tau. But again, here, because E is always changing because it's AC, that means that the current going through the inductor is always changing, which means it never reaches steady state. So what we're going to see today is we have E, but we're going to see that the voltage in the inductor leads E. Okay, so this is E and this is VL. Okay, so VL leads E. All right, so remember, we say it leads because it's happening first because this scale is time, right? So this happens first, this happens after. So VL is leading E, all right? And we're going to calculate XL, which is capacitive reactance, by right? two pi FL. Two times pi times the frequency times the inductance, okay? So let's do an example, and then we're going to show you in multi-sim how that works. And lab five is going to include inductive reactants in it. All right, so moving right along. Let's have our circuit here. Okay, E, R, L, and we have 20 volts at 60 Hertz. We have 1.5 Henry's. If you remember that inductance is given in Henry's, and we have a 1K resistor, all right? So if we remember that R is equal to 1K, so ZR, the impedance of that resistor, we can consider that to be one kilo ohm at zero degrees, okay? Now, XL is equal to two pi FL, which will be equal to two pi frequency is 60, 
and the inductance L is 1.5 Henry's. All right, and that gives us an answer of 565.487 ohms. Now, if you remember, XC was at an angle of negative 90 degrees as an impedance. XL is going to be at positive 90. So Z, the, the impedance of L is going to be either positive J 565.487 in rectangular mode or 565.487 ohms at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so ZC was negative 90. ZL is at positive 90. So if we want to find ZT here, ZT, because series circuit, would be equal to ZR plus ZL, okay? And that will give us one kilo ohm at zero degrees or one kilo ohm plus 565.487 ohms at 90 degrees. Okay. So if I was to do that on my calculator, if you remember, I would do 1K plus 565.487 at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, and that gives me an answer of 1.149K at an angle of shift equals 29.49 degrees. Okay, 29.49 degrees. So that's for ZT. If I was to do IT, all the math is the same. The only thing that's different when we include an inductor is that the angle is positive 90, not negative 90. So IT is equal to E over ZT, which is 20 volts at angle zero. I just include the angle zero just so you know it's at zero. Over ZT is 1.149K at an angle of 29.49 degrees. And that equals 17.409 milliamps, an angle of negative 29.488 or 49 degrees. Okay. That's what we get for IT. Now for VR, we do what we did before, but it would be IT times ZR, which is um, 17.409 milliamps at an angle of negative 29.49 times 1K. All right, and if we did that on our calculator, we would get 17.409 volts, an angle of negative 29.49 degrees. Now, if you recall, we've said this before, that the voltage across and the current through a resistor are in phase, okay? And the reason is we are multiplying the current by a value with an angle of zero. And since we add the angles, the angle will come out the same. So VR and IR are in phase. Always remember that. So VL, VL is equal to IT times ZL. Okay. And that is again, 17.409 milliamps, an angle of negative 29.49 degrees times 565.487, an angle of 90, all right? And that equals, once we multiply that out, 
0.845 volts and angle of 60.512. Okay, that's what we get there. Now, with VL and VC in an RC circuit, VL and VC were 90 degrees apart. And the same applies here. VL is at 60.512 degrees and VR is at 29.49 degrees. Okay, so those are 90 degrees apart, okay? So let's see if Kirchhoff's law applies here. We know it does, but we're gonna do it anyway. So does E equal VR plus VL? So does it equal 17.409 volts and angle of negative 29.49 plus VL is 9.845 volts and angle of 60.512 degrees, okay? And that gives us approximately, not approximately, very close to 20 volts at zero degrees, if we were to add that up. Okay, so what we will get here is 17.409, an angle of negative 29.49 plus 9.845, an angle of 60.512, and we get 19.9996, an angle of, we have a micro there, so it's an angle of negative 0 0.000831 degrees. So I'm gonna confidently write 20 volts angle zero on there, but I put the approximate sign, so I'm covering myself, okay? Now, there's a little rule you wanna see. With, with inductors, okay, the voltage in the induct voltage across the inductors at 60 degrees, the current through the inductors at negative 29 degrees, okay? So in an inductor, the voltage leads the current. And if you remember from the capacitor, RC circuits, in a capacitor, the voltage lagged the current, okay? The voltage lagged the current. And the way we remember this little fact is with this acronym, Eli, the Iceman, okay? Eli means voltage leads current in an inductor, okay? And then ice is current leads the voltage in a capacitor. Eli the Iceman, okay? So let's remember those numbers. You can always flip back to it, okay? So let's switch over to multi-SIM. Let's switch over to multi-SIM. So I'm going to uh, move this across. So I'm in multi-SIM now, okay? And if I start the circuit, first of all, I just have meters uh, measuring um, my voltage and current values. So we have VR1 is 17.395 in multi-SIM, and we calculated 17.409. VL, multi-SIM shows 9.869, and we calculated 9.845. So we're in the ballpark. And then our indicator is showing um, 17 milliamps. And we calculated 17.409. So if you wanted to put one of the DMMs in there, 
to show um, a little more accurate current. So let's connect this here. Let's connect this here. We'll do this to keep our shape. Here we go. So let's have that down here and then we'll start it up again. So we'll get a slightly, oh, 17.396 milliamps. And we calculated 17.409 milliamps. So that's what we have there. So our, our magnitudes of voltage and current match. Okay. Now let's check our phase angle. So I'm going to start up the scope. There we go. And now this is on. Let's turn. There we go. So now this is channel one. Okay, this is E. This is channel two, which is VL. And we see now that VL is leading E. Okay, VL is leading E in this case. They are not in phase. And we can see that channel two is happening before channel one. So on the rise and on the drops. Okay, so let's measure our phase angle. If you recall, our phase shift is calculated by this formula here. So let me go back. Okay, so our phase shift in degrees is calculated by delta T over T times 360. Okay, 360 degrees is how many degrees are in one cycle? The period of the cycle is the, the entire cycle. So in our case, if frequency is equal to 60 Hertz, okay, then our period is equal to 16.667 milliseconds, which is equal to one over frequency. Okay, so we know that. So we know this and we know that. So we need to calculate Delta T. What is the time difference between those two waves. So let's go back there. Here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna freeze it by using the single sequence. Okay, and then I'm going to stretch it out a bit. And then I'm going to change the vertical scale so I can make these signals a little more vertical when I'm crossing the zero line. Let's, let's even stretch this a little more. There we go. I stretch it out by changing my horizontal scale. These are my vertical scales, my horizontal scale. Okay, so let's see if we can make channel two a little steeper. Nice. So let's move this by using the horizontal position. So we have a definite starting point. And the distance between my two signals is one, two, three, four, five, five and a half divisions times 500 microseconds. Okay, it's five, five and a half divisions times 500 microseconds. That is the distance between my two waves. So delta T is equal to the number of divisions times the time per division, okay? Which in this case was 5.5 divisions times 500 microseconds per division, okay? If you remember, these cross each other out and we end up with a delta T of, so we do 5.5 times 500 micro, which is 2.75 milli. So 2.75 milliseconds. Okay, so we have that. So now our phase shift is equal to delta T over T times 360 degrees, which is delta T 2.75 milliseconds. T, which is our period, 
is 16.667 milliseconds. Okay, it's written nice and evenly, times 360 degrees. We can cancel out milliseconds, and we end up with 2.75 divided by 16.667 times 360. And we end up with 59.34 degrees, which is our phase shift between VL and E. So that's what we measured, 59.34, and we calculated 60.512, okay? So that is very close, very close. If we wanted to become more accurate, we can just take our signal, okay, and see if we can stretch it out. I don't think we can stretch out much more because that 5.5 milliseconds and 5.5 divisions and this screen is 10 divisions wide. So let's try anyways. No, we lose that one. So that's where we're at. Okay, so this is um, your example of an RL circuit, an RL AC circuit, and we calculated inductive reactance. The difference between that and RC is the angle of inductive impedance is 90 degrees, where with an RC circuit, ZC was negative 90 degrees. Okay, so that also changes the overall angle of ZT and it changes the angle of IT, all right? But VL and VR are still 90 degrees apart as they were in um, with a VL and VC in an RC circuit and Kirchhoff's law, as always, never lets us down. And it does apply that VR plus VL do in fact equal E. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if you're stuck on something, you can watch this again. It's very entertaining and it's a lot better than what you get on Netflix. Thanks for watching.